this is the add-on section guys that I put back on the first part of my video after I got done finishing my video uh, what I want to tell you is make sure you watch this video all the way to the end I think you really enjoyed it if you watch it all the way to the end uh, and uh, re uh, what I was trying to tell you in the uh, first part of my video when I get to the original video I made before I add this section onto it uh, for the very first video on the sheep and goats uh, he shows scripture of the Bible in the video and and what I try to tell you in that video I don't know if I make it clear or not I'm trying to take out the section I, what I stopped the video for and and uh, you know take out the sections of the video for reason I do that is because it showed it shows a lot of scripture in that video and I tried to take out the scripture that had been changed a lot I felt had been changed a lot or some I felt had been changed some that's why I take those sections out because it shows a lot of scripture in the video and I take out those parts of the scripture that I felt had been changed some or a lot in the video and uh, also uh, guys if uh, if you want on the very first video only on the sheeps and goats if you want to fast when I'm going to very first stop it and the screen goes black for the time it takes me to get to the uh, to get the next part of the video ready for, to set up for the next part of the video clip uh, just if you want to if you want to fast forward only 10 seconds from the time I stop it, the first video on the sheeps and goats I stop at like three different sections, two or three sections in that video. I only, only do it on that video, though, or you'll miss a lot of the other videos if you do it on the other, other videos. Only do it on the first video on the sheep and goats. But if you want to skip, when I very first stop it and the screen goes back to find the other part of the video, section of the video to go to, the same video, but the other section of it, if you want to fast forward about 10 seconds on each uh, on each time i stop it and the screen goes black on the very first video on the, on the very first video only on the sheeps and the goats guys you can do that i'll go ahead and go back to my original video now don't do it on the next two videos though the second two videos watch it all it's really good guys thank you enjoy it if you watch it all guys uh this is john uh jesus has come back so soon guys i really do believe that all the all the dominoes are lined up to fall now I want to show you these videos and uh, hope you enjoy them. Uh, now, I did have to take out some sections of these videos. You know, our Bibles are being changed because we're in the time of the Great Deception. And our Bibles have been supernaturally changed. The true Word of God will never be changed. It's spiritual. It's in God, the Father in heaven, and it's in His Son, it's in His Son Jesus. The true Word of God is in His Son Jesus and His Father God. And in the Holy Spirit that's in us that leads us to all truth. Is spiritual. The true word of God is spiritual and never changed, but the physical word of God is being changed for the great deception time that we're in now. So that's why I take out these uh, parts and sections of this video because it shows some scriptures that's not been, I mean, that's been changed. That's been changed. So that's why I took those out. Uh, I think they have been, or, or I wasn't sure about them, or, or, they, or, or they had been changed. But uh, the other ones, um, now they could have been changed a little bit. I don't like no changes to the Bible though. But there's so many changes to the Bible. I still want to put God's true word out there, but it's hard. It's hard sometimes because the word's been changed so much. You don't know. Sometimes even us that see the changes don't see all. We don't see all the changes. We see a lot of them. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the video. So just know that's why I uh, took out part sections of the video. So I apologize for doing that, guys. It's still a good video. Watch it. Hope you enjoy them. Now, you know, it's funny. In the world, they say, don't be a sheep. You know, it's bad to be a sheep. That you need to think for yourself, all this kind of stuff. But the Word of God says the opposite. Let's just, let's just get into this. So who are the sheep? Well, spiritually speaking, sheep are people who belong to Christ. John 10, 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his own life for the sheep. John 10, 27 through 29 says the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me i know them and they follow me verse 28 and i give them eternal life and they will never ever by any means perish and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand 
Verse 29, my father who has given them to me is greater and mightier than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. Now, who are the goats? And the prophetic, the goats are oppressors, wicked men, unbelievers. Goats are hard-headed. They don't, they don't want a shepherd. They, they, they're unruly. They want to do things their way. They can be aggressive. But I really want to... Okay, let me start it on the next section, guys. Bear with me one moment. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Hang on, Hang on guys. Okay, here we go. Isaiah 53, verse 6, says, All of us are like sheep who have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of, of us all, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, to fall on him instead of us. Do you understand this? That we deserve damnation, we deserve death, but he, but Christ has paid this price for us. Leviticus 16.22 says... Okay. Let me start on the next section, guys. It'll get better. There's longer sections here coming up. Hang on, guys. Just bear with me a moment. I'm sorry about that. Okay, here we go. I apologize, guys. The mighty, because he willingly poured out his, uh, his life to death and was counted among the transgressors, yet he himself bore and took away the sin of many and interceded with the Father for the transgressors, for me and you. This is all foreshadowed of what Christ did for me and you. This is why he is called the Good Shepherd. Would you do this for anyone? I'm not just talking to your friends and your family, but people who mock you and ridicule you and do all manner of evil against you. Would you do this? Probably not. Here's a greater question. Could you do this? Absolutely not, because you have not lived a blameless life. You have not been spotless. And, and the offering for the sin, the sin offering had to be without blemish. And Christ didn't just die for the sins of a family or a couple of people, but he died for the sin of the world. This is, what makes, this is why we give him honor. This is why we give him praise. John 1.29 says the next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, look. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is John the Baptist speaking. So if, in case the passage in Isaiah wasn't getting through your head that this is the Lamb of God. This is the person who takes the sin of the world away. Hebrews 9.28 says, So Christ, having been offered once and once for all to bear as a burden the sins of many, will appear a second time when he returns to earth, not to deal with sin, but to bring salvation to those who are eagerly and confidently waiting for him. Are you waiting for him? The word just confirms itself. The scripture interprets scripture. Are you waiting for him? Because he's coming again. First Peter 2.24 says he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offered himself on it as, a, as a, on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die in the, that we might die to sin becoming immune from the penalty and power of sin and live for righteousness for by his wounds you who believe have been healed it was personal he was thinking of you when he was getting nailed to the rugged cross he was thinking of me he was thinking of all mankind Leviticus 6 okay and now I'm going to put it like this last part will be the longest so I'll be uninterrupted for quite a ways guys Let's see if I, I hold on one second. Guys, back got it there. Okay, right here we go. Leviticus 14 7. He shall sprinkle the blood seven times on the one to be cleansed from leprosy and shall pronounce him ceremonially clean. Then he shall let the, the live bird go free over the open field. Listen, back in those days when you were a leper, you were cut off from people, you were cut off uh, from the camp. But you've been clean. Do you understand this? You've been washed in the blood. When you are washed in the blood, you are free. You are free of condemnation. You are free of the debt you owe. I cannot stress this enough, that to become a sheep, you must follow the good shepherd. Because the goats are lost. They have no shepherd and they don't want a shepherd. 
they may think they might have some strength. They may be aggressive. They may be mean, may be mean or stubborn or hard-headed, but it will do them no good when they have no shepherd to look after them. They think they're so strong. They think they have it all together. Matthew 25, 31 through 33 says this, but when the Son of Man comes in glory, comes in his glory and majesty and all the angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory. He's coming and he's coming back for a sheep. Verse 32, all the nations will be gathered before him for judgment and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates his sheep, his sheep from the goats. Verse 33, and he will put the sheep on his right hand, a place of honor, and the goats on his left, a place of rejection. He's going to separate them. Ezekiel 20, 38, and I will separate from you the rebels who transgress against me, who don't want to listen to his commandments, to his ordinances, and I will give it, and I will bring them out of the land where they may temporarily live, but they will not enter the land of Israel. Thus you will know without any doubt that I am the Lord. If you are a goat, you will live for a short time, but you will not truly live when it comes to eternity. I'm just being very clear for you. Well, if you are a goat, you may live it up. You may be having a ball right now, but it is very, very short-lived. Matthew 25, 33 says he will put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. Psalm 79, 13. So we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will declare and publish your praise from generation to generation. The sheep are thankful. The sheep praise the Lord. What is the last time you've truly been thankful? What's the last time you praise the Lord, but you say you are a sheep? Psalms 100, verse 3. Know and fully recognize with gratitude that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not ourselves, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This is what Psalms is saying. When you are a sheep, you don't belong to yourself, and you know that. You follow what the shepherd says. You don't do what you want to do. John 10, 11, I want, to, I want to tell you again. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, 27 to 28 says the sheep and the, and the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me and I know them and they follow me. Verse 28, and I will give them eternal life and they will never ever by any means perish and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. So I want to ask you, are you a sheep or are you a goat? Do you know his voice like that verse before that one said? Do you do you know the, see the Bible changes? Do you know the Lord's voice, Jesus, Jesus uh, his voice? Do you know his voice? Do you see the Bible changes? The Bible's been changed? And you don't even have to tell me because your fruit will tell on you. If you are a goat, though, I don't want you, the Bible says, consider your ways. The Bible says, let a man examine himself. If you know you're not living right, if you know you're a goat, you know you're being hard-headed, there is still a chance. As long as you have breath in your life, there is a chance to repent and get it right. Repenting is changing one's mind. It says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And today is the day of salvation. You can become a sheep today. And I urge you to become a sheep today. I'm a sheep. And Christ desperately wants you to join the flock. You belong to him anyways. I mean, he goes out the way to, to save the one sheep. He'll leave the 99 for the one. So there, no, there's a, But I want you to know this. There's only one way to join the sheepfold. You don't pay any amount of money to join the sheepfold. This is not an exclusive club. You don't pay any special dues or whatnot. Don't let anybody fool you. No, there's only one way to heaven. You can't work your way into the sheep club. There's only one way to, jo to join the sheepfold. And John 14, 6 says this, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God, the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So I want to invite you, if you want to join the sheepfold, and it's so simple, you just have to make up in your mind. You have to come before him and say, Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you now, come into my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. God, I'm a wretch undone. I can do nothing without you. I need you in my life. I need you to fix me. I need you to fix me, God. I confess my mouth and believe my heart that you died for me and that you rose again. And I think that I'm saved. That I'm saved by grace through faith. That there's nothing I can do to deserve this. You gave this to me freely. And I thank you, God, that I'm yours. And you are mine. I thank you that I'm a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I thank you that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I truly believe in my heart that you died for me. And I spoke in my mouth that you, that you, that, that you died for me. 
you were to come right now, I know I'd be in heaven with you. If I were to die right now, I know I'd be in heaven with you because I truly believe that you made the sacrifice on Calvary, that you were thinking of me when you made, when you made this sacrifice. And I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I thank you that I'm born again. I thank you that I'm a Christian. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want to encourage you that God has plans for you, plans of good and not evil, plans to give you an expected end, that he wants to use you in a mighty way, that all you have to do is submit, just lay down your life. So I, I encourage you, get into a Bible-believing church. Open your Bible. If you don't know where to start, start with the book of John and see what God wants, wants to do in your life because he has plans for you, plans of good and not evil, plans to give you an expected end, that he wants to use you in a mighty way. That, that he wants to use your pain for his glory, that all things that have happened to you are, are for the good. Everything that happened to you for the good, all things work together for the good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. I know that not only are you called, but you are chosen. All right, guys, this video is, uh, this video is about, uh, God, it's, it's called God Speaks Through a Homeless Man. God, God Speaks Through a Homeless Man. I'll go ahead and start it. I, I really enjoyed this video. I hope you do too. Yeah, the serious look just like y'all got. That serious, intense look. Because he's trying to find his way. He's trying to figure it out. It's frustrating. I'm trying to listen to God. I, I got my own flesh in my... Pulling me here. My own desires. My family, my friends. All these things is, 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 is distracting me from the truth. And it's difficult. To give in, especially when you're young, man. But if you can go through it, you'll come out like gold. If I can go through the fire, they don't want to go through the fire. They want to use a lotto and go to Jamaica and the Bahamas to do their own selfish thing. But he said, if you wait till I exalt you, I give you desire to your heart. But it's difficult to wait till everybody in a hurry. Technology, it's, it's fast, it's in a hurry. They're angry, they're frustrated, they got time, they're on the cell phone, they want to text message you, y'all in the same car, you going to text message him, he's right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody in a hurry, I don't know where they going, but when they get there, oh, they're going to be sorry. The faster you try to get there, that career, that money, and you're going to figure it out that, man, it was the journey. It was not the destination. You was in a hurry to get there, to come up, to be this, to be that. And when you get there, you're going to feel discouraged more than you did before you even started to get there. Because it was the journey, the people that you didn't stop to talk to like me at check -in. The people at the gas station. You was in a hurry to get there, but it was the journey. The more humble you be, then the more you can be fulfilled with your children. But when you think you got it and you're on your way, then you don't get less of it because can't nobody talk to you. You can't stop. You gotta hurry. It's a difficult thing, but you got it. I see the intensity. It showed you how to relate, connect to the people. I would say this. It's a man with pushing a basket. This man right here, they grill, you know. Don't you? Don't look at the outside appearance. I've seen them in action. People were pushing a basket. And I was under the bridge. And I was talking to everybody except him. He was the last person I talked to. He said, why didn't you talk to me first? He said, I should have talked. He said, don't you ever pass by a man pushing a basket and don't acknowledge him. I, I never do it in my life again. I talked to the person pushing that basket. How's your day? How you doing? talk to the homeless people because they said be careful how you entertain strangers. And most people that they came off the street and they got their career together, they won't even let you know that they've been through it. They try to act brand new. They, it's a testimony. What you go through, what you go through, it's for us to inspire somebody else. It's for me to pull the wig ones up. It's for you to pull the wig ones up. We don't go through this because of our own selfish reasons. We go through this give a testimony of how far God has brought me. It was never about me. I thought about me. Why I'm going through this? He said, back up, man. Who you going to inspire? Who you going to tell somebody about the glory and the grace of God if you don't go through it? 
to get out of yourself. And once I step back, I've been sitting there dictating the guy. And so I don't play with him. I don't ask him for a lot. I just say, give me my, my portion for the day. I don't want a lot of things. Just give me enough so I can deal with. He said, I'll give you a, but fulfill your bond greater than you can ever ask. I, I know what you desire. I know what you need. But Lord, give me my portion where I can be grateful. Well, I can be thankful. They are thankful. They are holy. They are grateful. They got a job. They don't want a job. They got 40 hours. You can't work on Saturdays. You can't work on Sundays. Now you got three days. You stay always complaining and griping and murmuring. Stop it. He said, be grateful with the little things. And wait, and I, I put you there. But he's going to put us in a place where they appreciate me in the job. Don't nobody take time to let them know why they're doing things they're doing. And that's the whole purpose of life. Let them know what they're doing wrong if you see it. I didn't always knew I was doing wrong. What about when they showed me long suffering? What about when they forgave me, but I can't forgive him? He did. He made a promise. I made a promise. I didn't fulfill it. Then they go off on me. Well, I got to go off on him because he didn't fulfill his commitment. That's wrong. You got to teach. They don't know. The only God they know is through you. Through your experience. They don't know about church because you can't go to church because it's a business. And all the church people, it's a clique, it's a club. And they done forgot about God. It's a business. Look at here. It's just the world. Ain't nobody being bold and talking about God because don't pray in school, take the prayer out of school, all these things, it's the world. We're getting in a time where God is not popular no more. And if you talk about it, I don't believe in Jesus, I don't believe in God, I believe in this, I don't care what you believe in, let my spirit speak for me. Let my action. But it was a time when I was just a hearer and not a doer. But you got to balance out. You got to go through the fire in order to be a doer, too. You're going to be a hearer, then you're going to be a doer. But don't let people throw you off your journey. You can't beat nothing. To, it's between your relationship with God. They can't understand you all the time because you're trying to figure out your way. I'm trying to figure out my way. I can't prove nothing to them all the time. I don't need them to figure me out. All I got to do is just be patient and do what was in my ability, my boundary. I don't need to outstep my boundary. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. You didn't feel me? No, you can't go feel me. I can't put the expectation on you. I don't always unfeel me, understand me. So that's wrong. Be humble. Acknowledge him in all your ways. When I do wrong, I say something wrong to offend you. Forgive me. I got to say it right away, get it over with. If I offend somebody at work, look, if, if they persecute me, look at God trying to strengthen me to show them who I serve. I say I believe, I work with, we'll teach them. They don't know. They don't know why they're doing that, why they're doing that to me. Let, let your light shine among men. They might glorify your father in heaven. It's real, man. I experience it all the time, 24 7. But I ask for it. I wanted to be a preacher when I was six, but I didn't know the price I had to pay. Much wisdom, much grief, much sorrow. Ain't all the way you'll get it. But if you can just go through the fire, you'll be like gold. When you take the jury to the pawn shop, how do they determine if it's real or fake? They put it through the acid test. They put the fire upon it. That's how we know if we're real or fake. We're going to go through the fire. You're going to have disagreement with each other, but it's okay. You're going to be friends, but if you have a disagreement, it's just a disagreement. That don't mean you ain't got to see it no more and talk to her or talk to her or whatever. I ain't got nothing to hide. My burdens are heavy, but when I'm weak, he's strong through me. He speaks through me. The weaker I get, the more frustrated I get with my life. And I did this, I did that. Then the more he speaks through me, the more he takes control of me. That's just what he wants you at. Get frustrated. That's what he's gonna speak through you. But you gotta, you, he gotta get you in that point where 
ain't nowhere else to go but to him. He said, those that I love, I correct them. I chastise them. When you go to jail, they call it the Department of Correction, Rehabilitation. But we get mad at the correction. He said, if I didn't love you, I would correct you. He could have took our life. Amen? He could take the life. But he corrected me. I just thank God for y'all. But this was Solomon X. Solomon was the wisest man to live. He had everything that man could desire. But one thing God said, leave the fire woman alone. But he couldn't understand why he had a desire for the fallen women. But see, the Lord knew that they were going to turn his heart against him. They were going to make him idol worship and build a God. But he didn't understand it. And I'm going to say this, the preacher, he searched the world out. He said, I want to know the, the, the basis behind wisdom and knowledge and understanding and foolishness. See, you can't know wisdom and knowledge and you should be a fool. But we don't want to be foolish. That's the only way you're going to get it. you got to be a fool first. How are you going to know a fool when you see a fool? How are you going to know foolishness if you haven't been foolish? See, you can't know wisdom and knowledge and you should be a fool. But we don't want to be foolish. That's the only way you're going to get it. you got to be a fool first. How are you going to know a fool when you see a fool? How you gonna know foolishness if you haven't been foolish? Foolishness is kind of worse and painful. Because we think we all are there. We got a lot of abilities we can create, we can be inventors, but we're limited. If I understand that I'm limited, then that's when God takes control and gives me the wisdom that I, I desire. Humility. Be humble. If you don't understand your purpose, Ask God. But ask him in sincerity. What's my purpose, God? Did you ever ask that question? What's my purpose? Why I'm here? What am I meant to do? But sometimes he can't tell us all at once. It might be too much. God's voice is loud in the earth. He says. Do you hear his voice? Do you hear him? Guys, hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to start the next one now. Just bear with me one second while I get ready here. Okay, guys.
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I love you all. I'll see you guys on the next video. I've been working really hard uh, on a new video. While I already, and then I found this when I had already got ready, but I still had to put it all together. And uh, I'll, I'll try to show you the video, try to finish that video and show you it next time when I get it ready. I've been working really hard on it for a while now. All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.